Let's open the Bible. We, we read scriptures. Must not waste time. I believe uh, scriptures, that's what we are here for. Uh, I decided to... How many of you have Bibles here? Lift up your Bible. How many of you, you have... You don't have Bible? Where, where are you going? <laughs> Were you coming to church today? <laughs> How many of you have notebook? Lift them up. Notebook. Let me shake your notebook. Ah. Where, where, okay, put them down. Let me see your pen. Pen. Yeah. <laughs> your pen? Is it a finger? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Where do you write after you study? I mean, <laughs> okay, so let's have big uh, books where we can write to. Bibles. Our Christianity without the word is not Christianity. Tell anybody, Christianity without the word. It's a story. Can we read uh, the book of Numbers 32? I want to show you something that we can read or share with you from the, chapter 32. Chapter 32. Now the children of Reuben and the children of God had a very great multitude of livestock. And when they saw the land of Jaza, and the land of Gilead, that indeed the region was a place of livestock, the children of God and the children of Reuben came and spoke with Moses uh, to Eliza the priest and the leaders of the congregation say, uh, Ataroth, Dibon, Jaza, Nimra, Ashbon, Ele, Shaban, Nebo, and Beon, the country which the Lord defeated before the congregation of Israel is a land for livestock, and your servants have livestock. Therefore, they said, if we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to your servants as a possession. Do not take us over the Jordan. And Moses said to the children of of God and to the children of Reuben, shall your brethren go to your war while you sit here? Look at that verse again. Verse 6, it says, Moses said to the children of God and the children of Reuben, shall your, children, sh shall your brethren go to war while you sit here? Now, why will you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them. Verse 8, Thus your father did when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the valley of Eshkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. So the Lord's anger was aroused. And that day, and he saw an oath saying, Surely none of the men who came up from Egypt from 20 years old and above shall see the land which I saw to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I just decided to read this whole for you to understand what I want to speak about. Here is a land that God has promised. It's over Jordan. But the Bible shows that 
behind that land there's a river jordan and, and there was a land that was good for livestock Remember the, the, the israelites were moving like this they found a land of livestock when they reach there, they say, hey, Moses, you know we are rich. We don't want to go on the other side. Let this one take it. In other words, they were satisfied. From there, if you can read, you see that it was not the first time this generation speak that way. Their fathers also spoke the same thing to Moses. But now Moses said, but why do you discourage the people not to enter to the land that he has promised? You must know that they were in a land where God didn't promise but in the present in that present time there was livestock and there was food for livestock and they began to say it's better we stay there I love the, mess, the, 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 the ways of Moses he said if now you people go on the other side and you sit here, you'll be discouraging these ones who are going to fight that side. Not long I was beginning to look, I mean, in our Christian life, I found that there's too much discouragement and the ones who discourage others are these ones who feel they have a right. And they have not arrived in the promised land. But they are just seeing what they are seeing on the present text. The children of God, the children of Reuben, they are still existing even today. The moment when God blesses them, they affect other people not to reach to the promised land. And this brings worries. Just tell your neighbor, deal with your worries. This is what I want to talk about. Many of us, we don't know that the enemy uses worries. Discouragement will come. And by these children of Reuben and Gad, they are there to say, we have arrived. But they have not yet arrived in the promised land. Listen to this. They, they are there to make the promises of God invalid. Tell them about the children of God and Reuben. They are there to make the promises of God in your sight invalid. That is the reason why today Christians are always worried. Not long I found that it's only worry that, that nullify the presence of God. Here, God, when he saw that, the Bible says he was angry, he pronounced a curse. He said, from now, no one of above 20 will enter Canada. He said, okay, no one here. The one that will enter there is the one who doesn't know what happened in the past. Because he doesn't want people 
that will compare the past and the present. So he said, no one now who knows the past will enter the future life. So that there must not be any worry. No because most of the time, why you worry, you compare. Tell you worry because you compare. Do you know that you are looking at your schoolmates? You are looking at someone's profit. You don't know that the Bible says everything works for good. You forget yourself and the assignment that God gave you. Tell anybody, say, can you deal with your worries? Otherwise, you won't enter the promised land. Otherwise, you won't see the promises of God. Now, small things makes people to worry. By the time of Jesus, he can, can Jesus. worries. I will show you some scriptures where Jesus condemned worries. But let's read this one first. Philippians 4 verse 4. But we will read from 4 to 7. Can you read that in Amplified Bible? I want to show you something. Philippians 4 Rejoice in the Lord always Delight, take pleasure in Him Again I say rejoice Let your gentle spirit Your graciousness Unselfishness, mercy, tolerance And patience be known To all people The Lord is near do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in, every, in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which re, reassures their heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts, and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Let me try to show you here. Worries means distractions. In other words, you are having many ways in front of you. You don't know which one to take. And then all that those ways does not lead you to the expectation. That is worry for you. Worry means I've got five ways. That is why of reaching me to another place, but not to my expectation. And then all these ways, I don't know whether they will take me to the place where I'm thinking. So here the writer of Philippians verse 4 said, the best thing, the first thing to fight worry is to rejoice. How can you rejoice always? After you are clapped, how can you rejoice? I remember when the apostles were clapped, beaten. If you read Acts 4 there, in the last verse, the Bible says they rejoice, they suffer. They, they suffer for Christ. Many times, worries makes us to defend ourselves. Therefore, it means if we are rejoicing, we are questioning how we take the pressure. 
because another word of worry is a pressure. Your response to that pressure determines your, your way before God. If you read verse 5, on that verse there, it says, let your gentleness be known to all men. That's what I'm talking about, that your response makes people to count you. People have to know you. Hallelujah. Amen. So the pressures you are going through are aware. People are aware of your challenges so they will look how you respond. So that's what the Bible says. It must be known to all. Because the Lord is at hand. If you read verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer. Just read that verse there in Amplified. It says what? Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Yes. But in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. I want the, I, I love the word specific. Remember that worry brings distractions. Now, you see, when you don't worry, you find a point, a direction, or a will of God. You pray according to the will. In other words, worry takes you away from God's will. So when you pray, you can pray according to God's will. You are distracted. But now, if you overcome worries, you find a point or direction. In other words, he who overcomes worry is able to establish his focus. So, can you see you are going there? You won't change the direction because of what you are going through. Is the one who overcome worry. Worry is the one that makes it to change the direction. You stop praying the way you were praying. Fast the way you were fasting. You are distracted. So the Bible says in everything, petition must be known. But, but it must be specific. You know, if it's not specific, it's of double-minded. And the Bible says, if you are double-minded, you can receive anything from God. That is why you find people praying, praying with worries and they can't receive. Tassel said, don't pray with worries. Double minded. And if you are double minded, you cannot receive anything. From God. Uh, Matthew 11. Matthew 11. If you read from verse 1, I want to explain that story to you. I want to explain the story. Just right. From Matthew 11, 1 to 11. Matthew 11, from verse 1 to verse 11. I want to explain that story. It's a very good story. The Bible says, John was arrested, he was in prison. When he was in prison, Jesus, Jesus, Send the disciples to go and cast demons. So people were talking about miracles and the disciples who are doing one, two, three. Now from there, from there, from there, from there, from there, from there, you know, the story was too much to extend that when John was in prison, he to hear what is happening. 
and he called one of the disciples and said please I'm in prison and then how can I baptize someone and he do my two works there and he leave me can you go and ask him if he's the one? Go and ask him if he's the one we are waiting for. Because the one we are waiting for, he will, he will look at my situation. He won't be happy when I'm in prison. Go and find out. It shows that John was worried. That is why all the time God uses prison to deal with someone. That is why to overcome worries. God used prison to make someone to overcome worries. When he was talking about you are so worried ah, that, is why, that is why many of us here we are in prison and we are worried that is why baba nchirile ka ra go leo ne re ya bilela so go use prison so modi mo shumisha go leo to preserve us o re re thokomela re bonuke so that we become used to any situation o re go no toela die toela die e mo ka o fela tja bophilo tja go leo tja re ka kopanang le tsona tshele ba go use this prison mo tja mo tlo go fa modi mo shumisha go leo go use this prison modi mo shumisha go leo to mature us o re dire o re re gule so that when we come out of prison o re ga re itswa go legong will be able to handle any pressure re tla gona o tshwara mo hatelelo o ngwe le o because there is nothing you can own in prison. There is nothing you can own in prison. Thank God you are in prison. When Jesus answered, he said, he says, go and tell John that he must not be offended. And then when they went away, they say, okay, you know, we saw this man doing one, two, three. He said, we must tell you what he is doing. Go and tell him what you saw. When now they went back, Jesus, a man who cannot be distracted, he began to say, let me speak about John. You people, you went to the palace. People who wear soft clothes but in the palace. But there's a man that no soft clothes. Jesus was trying to show that it's not the appearance or outside that we are worrying about that determiners. He said, this man there is no prophet like him. But the least in the kingdom is better than him. Today our focus is the soft clothes and the palace. Jesus, Jesus was teaching that it's not so important. Look at the man who came not eating. Everybody rejected him. And people came to baptize. But this man is in prison. Have you seen him? Have you seen him? He began to speak about you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Tasa said, I wish you are in prison. Say, I wish you are in prison. Have you been, how many of you been in prison? Lift up your hand. <laughs> you have been in prison. So you cannot put your furniture, is it? Can you pack your car there? <laughs> The food that you eat, did you work for? Everything you get it to your head to your mouth. Uh, how is your bed? In prison. What about your restroom? restroom If we reach a level where we understand prison, we, we won't, won't worry. worry. 
We won't worry again about what we don't have. I wish God can put in prison when you come out. Nothing will move you. If you believe, say amen. Let's read Luke 21. Verse 34. Verse 34. Yes. Luke 21. Luke 21. Verse 34. 34. Yes. But be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down and depressed with the giddiness or of decabatory and the nausea of self-indulgence and the worldly worries of life. And then that day when the Messiah returns will not come on you suddenly like a trap. Worries affect our revelations. Write it down. Worries affect our revelations. Here yeah, you can hear all the pleasures. All the worries of life can affect the visitation of our God that when he visits, he will never know. Worries they affect our sight they affect so that we won't understand the visitation so my mind began to question things. So when I was building up, I started to say, I want to understand. You don't need to understand why you are lacking. You don't need to understand God is your provider. You don't need to understand why you are sick. We have Jehovah Rapha. You are spending time trying to use your mind to build what you can say a knowledge. So you can say, ah, I don't know. It always backfires on you. It bring out stress. Worries. Anxieties. Depression. Many of us here today, we can't even pray. Can you tell us how, how many minutes are you praying? It's because you are worrying too much. It affects God's visitation. Listen to this. If you rejoice always, you rejoice. 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 The day God visits you, you'll begin to hear His presence. But when you are worried, your senses are not there. Your spirit is pressed down. Even when God comes and stands there, you won't understand it. Let me try to show you by Gideon. When Gideon was working there, when God visited, you could hear Gideon still worrying. But he's worrying towards God. He's telling God his worry. He's saying, God is with us. But God is there. God is standing in front of him. He said, if God is with us, we are not supposed to be seeing what we are seeing. For him to take assignment, he needed a, a useless sign. The, 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 the man who came to him was representing God. He says, you are the one who's chosen. Here. Go with all your mind. Whatever you can do, it won't be you. It will be God's doing it. But here he's standing. He said, no, yes, I understand. If truly we can overcome, what are you going to do? What if? That is why we are searching for many signs. Because we have seen a lot. And we are complaining. 
complaining alone. Jesus, stop searching for a sign. God wants to bless you. Stop searching for a sign. God wants to raise you. You are searching for a sign. Because you went through a lot. This is the time to understand that God can still choose you. God can still bless you. Out of nothing, God can raise you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In Matthew 6, 25 to 33, we are worrying a lot about many things. Jesus was teaching about it. Can you read 25 in Amplified? Therefore, I tell you, yes. stop being worried or anxious perpetually and easy, distanted about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear is life not more than food stop and there, the body? Stop, stop there. We'll carry on reading. I want us to look at this scripture. This scripture, <inaudible> will, this scripture always troubled me a lot. Uh, did you hear Jesus say, stop worrying? You know, if we carry on worrying the way we worry, Jesus will say, ah, you are worrying about food. I mean, food for your body. Close. You forget that you have been given life. I mean, you have been given life and the body. You are worrying about useless things. I am the one who gave you the body. Do you know that what you have here, you have been given? Look, you are worrying about your body. Are you worrying about your body? You, I mean, you are worrying about food. But you forget that you have been given the body. Here Jesus is showing that I can, I'm the one who gave you the body so I can provide food. Ah, look here. You are worrying about food. And whereas you can find food anywhere. You know, when you read, you find the Bible says, if God is able to provide for the bears, what about you? When, uh, Listen to this. It becomes unnatural before God. Even though it is a you are created to dominate bears and others. When you worry, you are giving what is useless to dominate you. You are saying gold rate bears better than you. Bears are becoming bigger than you. My God. Can you just read? Worry. Worry. Is life not more than food? And the body more than clothing. Look at the beds of the air. They neither sow seed nor reap the harvest nor gather the crops into barns. And yet your heavenly father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? Stop there. This is the question that Jesus asked the people who were there. A bed, you are worrying. A bed and you, who's better? Most of the time now, we are making our lives better, more, lesser than a bed. We are created to dominate animals, dominate them. So God said, if I'm able to supply food for so, these birds, why don't you believe I can do that for you? 
Why do you worry to extend that? It's like I'm rating bed better than you. I wonder why people die like birds nowadays. You are still at the store, boom. Because you are wearing too much. Enter the road without knowing the car is coming. Because you are comparing yourself with a bad man. God wants to provide you. If you can do that to all this, why do you want to kill yourself for clothes? For food? For what? You know, one time, I... I heard this story of this brother. He had a lady he loved most. I knew the brother. But the lady said the relationship is over. He went to buy paraffin. And he said he bought paraffin all over his body. He said he bought paraffin all over his body. Before he put a face, if you are leaving me, I will kill myself. And the lady said, huh? He says, I can bet myself He says, ah, you are lying. But the lady doesn't even mind about it. I put I it. So, okay, you can do it. He wanted to show the lady. Then the body was, was not given. By the lady. He, he poured himself. When he poured himself, he took a match and light. And they fire everywhere. When it's everywhere now, he grabbed the lady. And the lady. Push her away now. This is my body I'm given by God. Many people they learn it very late. If someone makes you worry, find your way. Just find your way. Don't kill yourself. Find your way. Because that person find you the way you are. There are some people who groomed you from nothing. You were small. And you were given birth. Anybody can do anything to you. Can you leave these people you start to focus and to go? Who allow you to grow to this level? Right now you are worrying about someone. Your Christianity is in shambles. You can't even pray. Because of disappointment This is the time of seeing the importance of what God gave you. If you stop worrying. And you begin to thank God. About any situation. God will speak with you. He will open a door for you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Can you carry on reading, Mama? Just read that scripture. Touch me a, a lot. Touch me a lot. Just carry on reading, Mama. 27. Yes. And who of you, by worrying, can add one hour to the length of his life? In other words, worry, worry is useless to us. Okay. And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and white flower of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that not, not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut off and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You, O oh little faith. You of little faith. Amen. In other words, when you start to worry, the faith goes down. The faith. Just boom. 
complaining, oh, other people are wearing these labels. Others are wearing this label. Ah. The faith goes to me. The Christianity of clothes is not a Christian. I mean, if you start to be a Christian of clothes, uh, you, are, you are nowhere before God. Because whatever you show off, God will never support you. You can't help God to show off. He does it by himself. He is a, a very jealous God. Whatever you wear must never portray you to be something. So you can hear, hear the Bible say, Look at the bird that were better than Solomon. Solomon was a very rich man. He was rich. He Solomon was a very rich man. Solomon was a very rich man. Solomon was a very and now you people are worrying about clothes. God will say, if it's me, who's able to make clothes to you, I can close you even better than the ones of before. If, I, if God wants you to break a record, He said, if it's me closing you, I can close you better than the people I have closed before. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's what I say. If it's God closing you, there is no show off. If you don't have enough clothes, you will still say thank you, God. Because it's God who closes you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you tell your neighbor, hey, stop worrying. This worry is taking you nowhere. It just makes you to suffer. It just makes you to complain. And you know, I've read about the book of Acts. Where the disciples were worried about Peter. Even when Peter came, he, he was no longer a miracle to them. Because that's how worry does. Even if you are, you are given a new thing, you know, when you are worried, that worry makes you feel, it's like you are, you are seeing a ghost. When Peter came, they said, hey, oh, it's not possible. Because worry makes your prayers useless. Your faith goes down. I don't know if you're hearing me. Today, out of worry, I'm expecting answers from your prayers. I'm expecting answers. I mean, I'm expecting someone to bring forth results. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let me give you the last scripture. In 1 Peter 5, 7, that's where the Bible says, God cares and he loves us and we are a rata. He's always watching over us. God doesn't want anything to happen to us. And we feel pressure of it. If we feel pressure, we give it. Cast all your curse upon him. Because he cares for you. Read mama that verse. Verse 7. Verse 7. Yes. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. In other words, I wanted to show you, but it's impossible. You are on the eyes of God. I don't know how I can tell you this, but you are on the eyes. God is looking. 
When someone is talking about you, he's away. Everything around you Everything of you is on his eyes. Listen to this. The Bible says, God's eyes are on the faithful. You are on the eyes. He's he knows your strength. He knows your weakness. When he's looking at you, whatever you are doing, he's aware. He knows what is happening with you. Do you know that, I will tell you this, but do you know that it's not your prayer that bring what God wants to give you? Do you know that it's not your prayer that God gives you what you want to give you? There are certain things you are praying for, He will never give you. There are certain things you are praying for, He will never give you. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are certain things you, 99% of the things you are praying for, God will never give you. So now, look here. That's why he said, casting all your cares. All this worry, give him. Because he is looking on you. He knows your where to take you. Know what you can do it on your own. You know what I mean? Look at the Bible. 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 Look the Bible. Look at the 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 Bible says, if it is not God's will, it won't give us. Sometimes we pray for things to spend it in our prayers. Sometimes we pray amiss. A of his will. Amiss of his will. You will never give us. Amiss what God is doing today. He wants you to be in his will. To be in his will. And you will never be in his will if you worry. You will never be in God's will if you are worried. When you worry, you are outside of God's will. When he's looking at you, when he's looking at you, when you start to worry, you run away from his presence. I was telling people about what Adam did. I was telling people I was telling people about what Adam did. Do you know that it's God who found Adam? It's not Adam. Who found God? Who found God? But look what happened to Cain. After, after he killed his dad, he starts from worry. He starts from worry. He ran away. When he ran away ah, and he stood there and said, No, ah, it's like right. God is favoring my brother. Because that it happens that way you compare oh, yourself with, with another. You look at others, you want to be like others. That's why you copy other people. That is copy other people. And the Bible says, and the Bible he killed his brother. And God found him. Always these people, they have to be those who are found by God. Baba who don't find God, they are in a case. I don't know if you are hearing that. If God find you, it means he has been searching for you. But if you find God, you are directed by him. When Cain was found by God, he asked, where is your brother? He lied because he's under a curse. I and he's outside. That's how people of worry does. Lies is their portion. Always defending themselves. Proving Proving a point. Showing off. People who lie are people who worry. People who worry are people who lie. Hallelujah. Amen. If we read Mark 13 verse 11, it says worries affect the operation of God. Can you just read Mark 13? 
Mareka 13 verse 11 verse 11 yes when they take you and turn you over to the court do not worry beforehand about what to say but say whatever is given to you by God in that hour for it is not you who speak but it is the Holy Spirit who will speak through you worry affect the operation of God the moment they arrest you for Holy Spirit to operate on you if you worry it's finished with you I want to show you another scripture maybe we close Mark 4 verse 9 to 11 Mark 4 verse 19 look what worries does Read verse 19. Verse 19. Yes. But the worries and cares of the world, yes. the distractions of this age with its worldly pleasure, and the deceitfulness and the false security of, or glamour, or wealth or fame, and the passionate desires for all the other things creep in and choke out the word and it becomes unfruitful. Always you must know that God does not release the word uh, just to release it. When the word of God goes, God goes out, it, it fulfills its purpose. But now, when the word of God is in us, when you receive it by faith, and it enters your heart, when you start to worry, worry enters your heart, and capture that word to be useless. You can read Bible 30 times or 100 times. You can read Bible 100 or 30 and you find you don't have the word of God. Because of worry. Worry just destroy the, word of God. the curse of this world. The lake you experiencing. The past. The future you are afraid of. When you have put them in your mind, the worry will just enter to arrest that word. So now, how many of us we are reading the Bible with That's why many of you, when you open the Bible, you sleep on That is why the Bible is you Have you ever find you open the Bible? It becomes a pillow. That's why some of your Bible, you don't even open it. That is why the Bible is not open. Scriptures that you are hearing become useless because of those worries. Listen to this. When the devil wants to deal with you, he will allow you to be afflicted. Your response to that affliction matters. Many of us, we are going to church, seminars, conferences, whatever. But the word is fruitless in us. It has got a nature to change us. Do you know that the word of God in you gives you the ability of God what God wants to do with your life must start by the word of God in you. When the word of God is in you, it creates itself and brings forth the ability of God in your life. So when you speak, it's no longer you speak. because of the word. But now, if that word is arrested, it's you speak. So if you people you become Christians where you allow any temptation to affect you, 
You can still read the Bible. Have notebook. Drawing. Everything. Painting the Bible. Whatever. At the end of the day. Satan knows where to get you. The small thing. You are arrested. You can quote scriptures. Which are not even effective in your life. It's as good as you know. You are thrown in lions down. 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 And lions say, "Hey, I've never it's seen a meat like this." I guess so. When in Namaya Mufutra, and began to say, "Let me just stretch myself." Tomorrow, Ricky, you go to Lepile. I just want to exercise a little bit. You go to exercise, Nyan. Yourself, you think the lion is leaving you. We now na anorita wiele ya utuela. Because you quote the scripture, the lion is realizing you are a wonderful meat. El tawiela ibonuru na maebu uti. He want to be hungry first. Inyo kori tume iswari kata la yaman niti pili. And yourself now you become strong. Kana wenano na asu wo uba strong watia. That is why there are Christians who pray too much. That's why. Oh na lema pruso ba ora pela kudugu udu. And also they are under Satan too much. E ne ba tuti kara Satan kudugu udu. I don't know if you hear me. Ake zema lento. So it's better you quote that scripture. Jana ukau no quote verse ya ole ngalo leu. When Satan try to do something. Ah Satan anya kau di assist. When lion try to do something, you say you are doing nothing. The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. How many of you are more than conquerors? If you are more than a conqueror, why are you worried? Why are you complaining? The Bible says the Israelites complained God destroyed them in the desert. Complains all the time. When I look at you, I see complaints. Some of you, you officially complain. Your appearance shows that you are complaining. Today, tell yourself that what the devil is doing on me is over with him. He has got nothing to do with you. 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 If, if you believe, shout hallelujah. You know, Jesus spoke another word that I want to tell you. He said, I know the ruler of this earth is coming. But he said, but you have got nothing to do with me. Jesus knew he is going to the cross to be crucified. But he said, the ruler is coming. But you have got nothing to do with it. If it was you and me, we were supposed to have really made the disciples to rebel. When Jesus said, how, how many shots do you have? They say two. They say it's enough. But people who came there, they were more than six thousand. They were more than six hundred Chinese. But Jesus says too short they are enough. That's why when they are approaching, the Bible says he went forward. 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 He was confident. He fulfilled the assignment without fear. And without worry. I don't know if you're hearing me. Today, I want God to give you heart. 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 Ask your neighbor. What is it that is making you worry? So, what is it that is making you worry?